Peace and blessings to everybody. Hope everybody is having a good Sunday. Hope everybody tried to keep the Sabbath day, get rest, spend time with friends and family, spend time with God, read the word, meditate on the word. Now, I did see the video or some videos about people talking about the U.S. House of Representatives trying to get rid of the New Testament. Now, when it comes to these things like this, God is not the author of fear or confusion. If you are truly chosen, you know you have nothing to worry about. You know that God is on your side and you know that we are in the end times regardless. These things are gonna happen. We have nothing to worry about. Just keep it moving. Keep getting through your trials and tribulations and keep loving life there is nothing to worry about they can do whatever they want to do but evil will not prevail and jesus will win the battle the war now today we're going to be talking about seven ways to be led by the holy spirit now the first thing i want to bring up is when we're talking about being led by the holy spirit we still have to learn to discern others around us and even ourselves because these are some steps that you can follow when it comes to being led by the holy spirit but you're going to see people that call themselves sons of god daughters daughters of god christians all type of things but god tells us that these things that we are calling ourselves sometimes we deceive ourselves because we can't say what we really are unless it's something like really logical or factual now calling yourself a son of god and things like that you have to be on on top of this this is something somebody else have to call you because blessings come from other people and in romans chapter 8 verse 14 he says for as many are as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god but you have to look at this if you are led by the spirit it's going to show through action it's going to show through by your fruits now, if you're calling yourself that, you got to understand some people can you can like you can literally wake up tomorrow and call yourself a Christian, but never did Christian things in your past life at all. So this is what God says in one John chapter three, verse one through three. Now, he says, behold, what manner of love the of love the father have bestowed upon us that we should call that we should be called the sons of god therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew not of him now let's pause right there if the world doesn't know of god and you was once living in the world and then tomorrow you wake up from being saved or anything calling yourself a christian calling yourself a son of god or a daughter of god and you go out there and do these things and type of in other people's face they're not going to think that you are of that because first of all they don't even know their self second of all if you just wake up and you calling yourself these things they're going to be confused because they like first of all you was just living a life like us so how can you really truly call yourself any of this stuff you have to show it by through your fruits through your actions by your by listening to obedience listening to that conviction that guiltiness in your body meditating on his word being a doer and a hearer these type of things Everything that God tells us are commandments and their actions. Now let's continue read it on. Beloved, now are we the sons of God and do it not yet appear what we should be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that have this hope in him purif purifieth himself even as he is pure. Now, remember, like I just said, everything that we going when it comes to, you know, calling ourselves Christian, son of God and things like that, let other people speak on your action. Now, you can tell, like, if somebody just purely hating and just talking down on your name and stuff like that. But when it comes to speaking about your life, when it comes to somebody documenting your life, they have to be the one to call you a son of God. They have to be the one to call you a daughter of God. They have to be the one to call you a true Christian and things like that, because you're never going to be able to tell that. But besides your actions, let other people speak on your blessings. Now, this is why we got to produce that obedience and stuff, too. We got to show these people that I was that example of God, what God wanted me to be, no matter what happened in my life. Now, the first thing we're going to go over is obedience and conviction, because first of all, that conviction 
is that Holy Spirit. When you're when you do when you do go sin and you feel that sorrow, that sorriness in your heart, like I disappointed God, that is a very good thing because first of all, that's how you know you're even trying to listen to the Holy Spirit. Now you could be ignorant to it and still go back into your vomit and do anything that you want to do, but you need to listen to that conviction and that guiltiness within you when you have done something wrong. That is the Holy Spirit telling you to be obedient. And we have this verse right here, 1 John or, or chapter 1, verse 8 through 10. And he says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us, give us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his the word is not in us. Now, I went to cross many many live streams on TikToks and things like that people trying to convince you that you're not a sinner that you have done nothing wrong for being human and things like that you gotta understand what god created us for god created us for to be fruitful and be in the spirit of him which is love meekness temperance joy peace all things that are good but we could decide what we want to do with our life and the fact that you know people be like you're a human well duh you're human yes you're gonna fall because everybody has fallen short of the glory of god and things like that but that don't mean that we're supposed to be doing those bad things don't let nobody deceive you and thinking that there is no such thing as sin sin or get transgression into his word and he says right here, if we say that we have not seen, we make him a liar. So if we tell ourselves that we have not seen, we're lying to ourselves. And then we're also calling God a liar. It's not a good thing to do. Now, on to the next one is to meditate on his word. Meditation does not mean like yoga or anything like that. Meditate means to focus. Now, when you're going through these bad things and these trials and tribulations in life, you need to have the word all the way, always in the back of your head and thinking about life because the devil does not sleep, especially when he knows to attack. He's looking for that opportunity. He's waiting for you to slip. And once you slip, you weren't thinking about the word. You got to keep the word in your head at all times. Now, let's think about Psalms chapter one, verse one through six It's blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and he in, in, in his law doeth he meditate day and night. He think about the word day and night and and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water that bring it forth his fruit in his season his leaf also shall not wither or whatsoever he doeth shall prosper the ungodly are not so but are like the chaff which is in the wind driven away therefore the ungodly should not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the conjugation of the the righteous for the lord knoweth his way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish well, that was a lot to read. I ain't even mean to click off right there. But look, yes, we have to meditate on his word day and night. We have to think about God day and night because the devil doesn't sleep. It's only two sides to this world. It's evil and good. You will know by whether you're finna fall into something evil or some, to something good by meditating on his word. Because when you're going through life, you're going to see it going against his word. Simple as that. Now, number three is be a doer and a hearer. We have to listen to God, but we also have to do. We can't just listen and not do and then do and not listen. Doing and not listen is not understanding what he was saying, but trying to go through with the action anyway. You see what I'm saying? That's possible. Now, in James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25, he says, "Be, But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving, deceiving your own selves. For if... Any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a, uh, unto a man beholding the natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and go of his way and straightway forgetteth the what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word. This man should be blessed in his deed. So we have to learn to make those coexist. Procrastination, slothfulness, 
are very big sins. We do not need to be falling into those. And then, you know, procrastination is listening or telling somebody you're going to do something, but you don't even do it. Being hypocritical, all those things, those are not things that you need to be, you know, falling into. Those are not going to bring you good deeds. Now, on to the next one. Don't quench your thirst, rebel, and or grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not quench your thirst. This is something we have to be consistent on every day. Having a relationship with God is every day. As you don't have a relationship with God for a week and be like, oh, I got the experience and I'm able to get through life. No, God has to guide you through your life with the Spirit 24-7. Do not lose your thirst for the spirit. Do not grieve the spirit, meaning to be disobedient. And do not rebel the spirit. Don't push the spirit away by continually doing, because the, the spirit can depart from you. It's just continually falling into sin. And 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 through 22, it says, Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Now we can go on to the next one, which is number five. Seek God for natural and spiritual guidance. God needs to be your natural instinct. He needs to be your natural thoughts. When we're going through these trials and tribulations, we got to stop worrying about, okay, what's happening next? What's happening next? What I got to do next? Because we could possibly make the wrong move. Remember, our heart deceives ourselves. If we are too much into our flesh, it can control our thoughts. If our thoughts are being controlled, we don't know what to do next. We cannot let you know our flesh win the battle we gotta let god win the battle for natural and spiritual guidance and for that verse we're gonna speak about john chapter 14 verse 26 and he says but the comforter which is the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you the holy spirit is the ultimate comforter when you're going through things in life rely on god let go let these anxieties depression and things go let god comfort you with everything that he's trying to bring you in life instead of always looking for the answer let the answer come to you but you got to remember how that faith without works is dead remember to put that work in but don't act like you need to have these things. Act like you need to have God. Let God guide your life. That all, that's all that means. Now, for the next one is fearing God. And then I also got two verses for that. Because what is fearing God? You have to know what the fear of the Lord is. And first of all, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom also. Now, when we're talking about fearing God, this is what... Fear in God brings us. The fear of the Lord is the fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. When we fear of God, we think about the consequences that come next with sinning. He tells us all these consequences that come next with, uh, with sinning besides just hell. People think that if you just sin, you're going to hell. No, God doesn't send us to hell before for our sins. He sent us to hell for our hearts intense if we're getting sent to hell for our sins that means everybody is going to hell because we all have fallen short to the glory of the glory of god we have fallen short of his grace and things like that but you got to find your way back and once you have that fear of the lord it departs you away from all the sins that keep chasing you or you chasing that sin which is the snares of death and then what is the fear of the lord well, in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13, he tells us the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy in the evil way and the forward mouth. Do I hate in order to fear the Lord? We have to hate everything he hates. That's the beginning. Hating everything he hates. Now, it's going to hurt. It's going to change you. It's going to renew your mind and your body and things like that, because you have to think about it. The, everything that God was telling us he hates is against it's everything that we was already doing. Everything that God says he hates is against the way of life that we already live in to fornicate, to commit adultery, to cuss, to drink, to smoke, to all these things that is not leading you in the spirit. This is where the stubbornness, you have to get rid of the stiff neck 
actions and all that you have to get rid of all that in order to truly follow, uh, follow god and that starts with hating the same thing that he hates release yourself away from this sin and for the last but not least is willing to do god's will which is spreading the good news you know um you do now don't get me wrong because it is a saying that's going around you have to spread the word to in order to go to heaven but do not do not believe in that you have to have true faith because the only thing that gets you in heaven is the faith in christ the only thing that pleases god is your faith the only thing that's going to get you into heaven is you and god nothing else don't tell don't let other people tell you what's going to get you into heaven but to spread the good news is to save a soul now you can't save anyone but you can minister unto them and plant that seed for god to work in their life so you can save a person but that's gonna be the end of this video man thank y'all for watching peace and blessings to everybody out there be looking out for the next video and i'm gonna catch y'all later man peace and blessings